This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. And we start today in Europe, where the coronavirus is wreaking havoc on the industry. Renault is going to get rid of 15,000 workers to deal with slumping sales and to help boost profits. Around 4,500 of those cuts are expected to happen in France, mostly with voluntary buyouts or retirements. And the German supplier ZF said it's also going to get rid of anywhere from 12,000 to 15,000 jobs, about half of which would be in Germany. The company CEO said it expects heavy financial losses this year and the slump threatens its financial independence. Nissan is going to close a plant in Barcelona, Spain, which will result in about 2,500 job losses. And in Formula One, the Williams team said it's considering putting its Formula One team up for sale. Might have been a bad day in Europe, but it's been a very good day for Elon Musk. Tesla CEO just received his first performance-based payout, which is worth more than $700 million. He earned that whopping bonus for keeping the company's market cap at $100 billion and over on a 30-day and six-month trailing average. And we believe this has got to be the biggest payout any CEO in a publicly traded company has received in the history of the world. Mercedes was forced to close its museum in Stuttgart, Germany because of the coronavirus crisis. But it reopened it a few weeks ago with social distancing restrictions. But obviously, many people are still unable to travel to the museum and visit it. So Mercedes shot this cool drone footage of the museum and released it on social media channels, where it's already been viewed around 6 million times just in the first few days. While it's not the same as being there in person, it's still cool to look at and, hey, it's free. Kicking the tires before you buy a car might become a thing of the past. Not only are new car sales moving online, but Ward's Auto reports that so are used car auctions. Over the last 10 years, Mannheim, which has over 80 auction locations, made a push towards all digital sales. At the end of 2019, almost half of its sales activity came online. But as soon as the coronavirus hit, Mannheim went 100% digital, and that could have a lasting effect. When asked if Mannheim's physical auction houses would open soon, the head of the company said, I hope not. It's an adjustment for some people, but online auctions are safer and faster than physical auctions, but they also require absolutely accurate descriptions of the vehicles and detailed condition reports. Is the Kia Soul the natural successor to the Chrysler PT Cruiser? Chris Theodore says so. He was in charge of product development at Chrysler when the car was done. He was also our guest yesterday on AutoLine After Hours, and here's what he had to say about the PT. In fact, there is one. The closest thing to to a PT Cruiser now is actually the Kia Soul. Hmm. In fact, it, you know, I, I kind of think of it as the uh, legacy you know, to the PT Cruiser, obviously in a modern package, but the original intent of, of the PT Cruiser was, you know, we, we went retro because you needed a different style. Chris Theodore says the PT Cruiser was the only small car that Chrysler ever made any money on. By the way, in case you don't know, Chris was also responsible for the second generation Chrysler minivan, was heavily involved in the Dodge Viper, as well as the 2005 Ford GT and 2005 Mustang just to hit some of his PD highlights. There's a ton of interesting info in that show, and you can watch it right now on our website or our YouTube channel. After a week or so of teasing it, the all-new Acura TLX finally made its official debut. It rides on a new dedicated sedan platform whose wheelbase is over three and a half inches longer than the outgoing model. It's also wider and lower than before. Styling is inspired by the Acura Precision concept and the Type S concept, 
which really shows through in the front face shot. The hard angles of the body are then picked up on the interior dashboard and door panels. Interior highlights include a 10.2-inch infotainment screen that sits high on the dash, a 7-inch instrument cluster, an optional head-up display, and real aluminum, wood, and leather. A 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that makes 272 horsepower is mated to a 10-speed automatic, which comes standard in the new TLX. A 3-liter turbo V6 is also available in the Type S variant, which is returning to the lineup after 10 years. Acura has not released power numbers for the new engine, but the Type S will come standard with all-wheel drive and the same 10-speed automatic, but with special tuning. The 2021 TLX starts arriving this fall with a starting price in the mid $30,000 range, about the same as it is today. However, the Type S will not arrive until spring of next year. Some of us have wondered why Ford did not use the Mach 1 name for its new electric crossover coming out. Well, now we have the answer, and that's because it already had plans to bring the Mach 1 back to the Mustang lineup. After being away for 17 years, the Mach 1 will return this year with unique styling elements, standard performance parts, and a 5-liter V8 under the hood. Ford says this will be the most track-ready 5-liter Mustang ever, so it sounds like this car should slot in right below the GT350. And speaking of new vehicles, Nissan just about revealed all of its future product in this video. It starts with the Aria, then moves up through the lineup, including the all-new Frontier pickup, and finishes with exciting news that an all-new Z car is making a comeback. That car looks like it'll have some retro styling cues. And does anyone else think the headlights look similar to the ones on the Hyundai Prophecy concept? Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Artificial intelligence could be the next tech wave that changes the world and the automotive industry. It's being applied in many different areas of the automotive business, but one area where it's really paying off big time is in analyzing data to reduce warranty cost. AI is the topic that we cover on AutoLine this week. Take a look. Yeah, so we've had a number of uh, tier ones that we've been working with recently all around, um, I'd say things like transmissions and axles and motors, where we're using a lot of the testing data, performance testing data that they're generating um, at the end of production lines or you know pre-production testing that they're doing for durability testing. And that's just huge amounts of data. So if you can just imagine you know, an engineer trying to create every rule and try to think of every possible failure, like it, it's, it's a lot of effort. And that's something AI has been fantastic. So in some of our use cases, we've been able to reduce uh, likelihood of warranties by as much as 30 to 40%, which is kind of to your point, leading to millions of dollars of saved uh, for the manufacturers and really improving their brand because you can also, you know, know that these vehicles are not going to have those issues. That show, by the way, has three AI experts from Canada. Did you know that Canada plays an outsized role in the development of artificial intelligence? It's a fascinating story. And if you'd like to learn more about that and AI, you can catch that show on our website or our YouTube channel. Now to the AutoLine garage, where I've been test driving a Toyota Supra this week. Even though I'm not a fan of the styling, I find it a bit contrived and overdone. That car definitely has a boisterous following with young men. When I was out driving around, I got a number of them honking their horns, pointing at the car, and giving me thumbs up. So it definitely turns heads. But to me, this is more of a track car than a sports car for the open road. It's hard to get into and out of. I constantly had to remind myself to tuck my chin on my chest so I didn't bonk my head on the roof. I think that's because the sides of the roof curve downward for additional structure and side window support. The door opening is not very big and the window opening is fairly small and short too. That means you really don't want to drive this car with the windows open, or at least not at speeds over 40 miles an hour that is, because the wind buffeting just becomes too much which is a shame because one of the pleasures of driving a sports car is driving with the windows down. Once I was inside, though, it fit like a glove. But drivers who are over six feet tall tell me 
there's just not enough seat travel or headroom for them. This car is fast and has cat-like reflexes. Its 3-liter Turbo 6 produces 335 horsepower and 365 pound-feet of torque. There's a sports setting that gets the engine revving higher and produces a noticeable snap, crackle, and pop in the exhaust note. That's fun when you're really getting on the car, but I quickly grew tired of it in everyday driving. The version I drove, a premium model, came with a price tag of $57,570, including destination charges. That's actually a pretty good price for this car, which has superb performance. But if you are at all considering buying one, you definitely need to take it for an extended test drive for all the reasons I just listed. And with that, we wrap up today's report and this whole week's worth of reports, and we'll see you back here again on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.